Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 16, going to be starting at verse 12 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, in verses 12 and 13, Remember, in verses 9 to 11, Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. She must have gone back to the tomb uh, after the, the, uh, the other women told uh, the disciples to go to Galilee. She seems like she goes by herself back to the tomb and she sees these two men. And, uh, and then we read in John chapter uh, 20, verses 11 to 20, the appearance of Jesus to Mary Magdalene. Now we get into verse 12 and 13, where it tells about the story of Luke. In Luke uh, 24, verses 13 to 35, where Jesus appears to the two men on the way to Emmaus. <clears throat> and it says here, verse 12 says, And after that, he appeared in another form unto two of them, and they walked and went into the country and they went and told it unto the unto the residue neither did they believe them so again we see that portion of scripture in uh Luke 24 verses 13 through 35 now it says here in verse 12 that he appeared Jesus appeared to these two men on the way to Emmaus in another form in another form. Now, the form of Christ is ever-changing. He appeared to Jacob and he wrestled with him. He appeared to Abraham as a judge of Sodom and Gomorrah. He appeared to Mary as a gardener. And he appears to these two men as a teacher or as a rabbi. Although Jesus himself does not actually appear to people today, yet he does present himself to us to other forms, in, through, through other forms. The form of a friend, a friend's phone call. He appears to us in the form of a boss or a co-worker or a caring relative. Or he can appear to us in the form of a stranger at the store, right? God can use God can use anything to minister to us. God can manifest himself to us in different ways and in different forms. God is the God of the whole world. He can appear in many forms and languages to people all over the world. The Lord will take, he will take on any form that people will need. In the book of Revelation, Jesus appears <clears throat> as a mighty warrior coming back to the earth with his, with his saints. And also he appears as a lion that, as, sorry, as a lamb that was slain. We see this in Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 and Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. So Jesus appears as different things and, and he, to minister and, and to bring life to people, to bring instruction to people. And then it says and in verse 13, neither believed they them. So these two go to Emmaus, Jesus appears to them. Their hearts are burning from the word that he would speak to them. And they immediately go straight back to Jerusalem and tell the disciples. And what? Well, they, they didn't believe them either, right? Listen, don't be too hard on the disciples. We would have probably done the same thing. If two, listen, if, if two or three people showed up to your house and said, that they saw one of your one of your dead relatives at the grocery store or walking in the neighborhood 
How ready would you be to believe what they say? Uh, I saw you, I saw your aunt. She's been dead now for what, 10 years? I saw her in the store this afternoon, sure. <laughs> right? This is what's going on. These two, these two men, they go to Emmaus, they see Jesus, they run back to Jerusalem. Hey, disciples, hey, we saw Jesus. He was with us. He talked with us. Oh, really? Uh, that's nice, right? Although Jesus had told them several times that he would be crucified and rise from the dead, they just didn't believe it. The disciples, they just did they just didn't believe it. But again, don't be too hard on it because we probably would have done the same thing. We probably would have said the same thing. Even though what? Even though Jesus raised people from the dead, right? Even though Jesus raised the, 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 the woman of Nain, her son from the dead, and several other people from the dead. Yep. Yeah. Verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. And, <laughs> and he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. Right? Because they believed not them which had been sent, which, which had seen him after he was risen. Right? Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. He appears to these two men. And they go tell the disciples. Go tell the disciples. They're telling the disciples. They don't believe. Jesus finally appears and he upbraids them. The reason why we say the dis, that, that the ten disciples I'm sorry, the reason why we say the 10 is because, is because at Jesus' first appearance, his, his, to his disciples, Thomas was not present. So Jesus is appearing now to his 10 disciples. Remember, Judas is, is probably dead by now because he hanged himself because of betraying the Lord. And Thomas was not, was not with them, according to John chapter uh, 20, verses 19 through 24. So in verse 14, Jesus now is appearing to 10 of his disciples. Now, and it says he upbraided them with their unbelief. Now, the disciples were, were to be men of faith. The disciples will go down in history as examples of Christian character and living the time would the time was soon coming when they would preach the good news of a risen savior to people who will never have the opportunity to see Jesus alive as new believers down through the centuries will will exercise faith in the one who they will never see on earth. So these disciples should have exercised their faith in the accounts that were given to them and the instruction to go to Galilee. These men will become men of faith eventually, but it will be a faith that has seen the Lord their faith will not be a faith based on does Jesus really exist, but their faith will be on whether God will be faithful to his word and to his promises. So the faith, listen, I guess what I'm saying here in this portion is that the disciples believed in the Lord and in his resurrection because they've seen him. What, what did Jesus say to, to Thomas? Blessed are those who believe and yet have not seen. Right? Have not seen. Well, the disciples can't claim that. You and I can. We can claim it because we have never seen Jesus. Right? We have never seen him alive. So we are, we are the part of those, we are, partakers of that blessedness of those that 
have not seen and yet believe. But the disciples, they can't claim that. They have seen the Lord. When, when Jesus told them, I will be crucified and rise from the dead, they didn't believe. And when they, even when they were told by people who did see Jesus after he rose from the dead, they still didn't believe. So now these disciples are to be men of faith. They're to take this gospel into all the world. And they are to preach this gospel to people who will never have the advantage that they had. The disciples had the advantage of seeing the Lord after he rose from the dead. And they will preach the gospel to people in, in many parts of the world, well, in the known world at that time, to people who, who will never have that advantage of see, ever seeing the Lord. And these people who they preach to will have to believe without seeing. The disciples, they didn't, you know, they, they, they had to see in order to believe. And they did see. And Jesus, re <laughs> Jesus rebuked them for it, right? He rebuked them for it. But we don't have that advantage. Yet Jesus said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Our faith must be based not on what we have seen because we haven't seen the Lord, but on the truth of the Bible and on those around us who have a changed life. Listen, the only faith the only thing that our faith can rest in is this book. That's it. The word of God and the testimony of changed lives around us. You know that's true. You know that that when you see, when you, uh, uh, for example, you grow up with somebody in your life and, 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 uh, and then you see them 20 years later and you know what they used to be like. They didn't want anything to do with God. Maybe they were, you know, into some kind of sins or whatever, uh, uh, or, or involved in alcohol or, or drugs or something like that. And now, 20 years later, you see them. They're all cleaned up. Their life has changed. They're going to church now, right? You, you can have, you can come to Christ because you see what Christ has done in someone's life. And this is the way it is for us today. We, we don't have the advantage that the disciples of seeing the Lord alive. Our faith has to rest in what the word of God says, that book, the, the Bible, and also in seeing changed lives, people's lives changed. That's our, that's our testimony that God is, that God is real, that, that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, the, the word of God and, and a changed life. All right, we're going to get into verse 15 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.